Welcome back. So now let's try and actually, you remember we did the store data where we kind of hard coded the values in. And I even said, well, we want this to be an HTTP POST request. So let's put that back, an HTTP POST. Do you guys remember what we called that? That was the action verb. So we add an action verb here again saying HTTP POST because now I actually want to force the user into using post to actually store data about a person. That would be the first step. Then we will, instead of just printing out the person, we will redirect him to the actual index. And I'll show you both of these in the next couple of videos. First, we need to start using what's called forms inside HTML. So we have again our person controller, and here we have our index view for persons. And we just made that a strongly typed view, as you can see up here. Now, I added a new thing in here. So let's just give you guys a bit of room here so you can read it all. I added a new div and inside the div I've added what we call a form. So first there's just a small header here just explaining this is an add person thing and then let's just put in a break line here to give some space. There we go. Oh that wasn't very pretty. Let's do a break line. So let me try and explain to you what's actually going on here. This is pretty much just a form. <laughs> nothing there. That's uh, how a form looks and if you guys did the HTML course you know that. Inside the form you have to define an action. What will happen when I press the submit button? So the simple way to implement a form is that we always have a submit button right here and here instead of submit it could say add like this but the type needs to be submit. Meaning that whenever I click the add button that's going to show then it will actually look for the most the closest outer, for, uh, outer tag called form and there it will execute the action with some kind of method. In our case, the action is going to be slash person slash store data. Now, you have to recognize this from the URL, right? So if I wanted to do the store data inside my URL here, it'll look something like this, slash person slash store data. That's kind of just what I'm doing here inside the post. I'm saying slash person slash store data whenever you do the submit button, right? And then the method should be a post method, right? So that's all I have to do. Now I've specified a form in the index file. But notice I'm in the index file. So what does that mean? That means that when the application is actually running inside the index file, not the actual, it's not, I'm not in the store data yet. I'm in the index file. There's just been added a new guy here. And then I just show the list of people below. So let's try and run the application just to show you this part of the application. So this is what the application looked like now. We have an ID here that's actually a number field and we have a name here that's just a text field. And then I put in a break line and then I have my two different um, persons right now. So it's I've just added this new form in between the header and the list. That's all I've done. Let's have a look again at the code just to show you. So I've added, here's the index. Then I have the form right here inside a div. And here I have my for each loop, right? So let's have a look at that, what that actually looks like in HTML. I'll just inspect the page and we'll just look at the entire HTML for this page now. Just to show you, I'll go into elements and I'll just expand the body part. And here we have the nav bar first. Inside there is a container. And inside there we have, oh, wrong one, sorry. Here's the container. And in here you just see all of the stuff I just showed you guys. And in there there's another div. And here's the form, right? So it's pure HTML that I've just written inside the view. And that HTML is now being presented here. And all I need to know is when you click that submit button, what should actually happen? And what I'm saying is when I click this submit button, I'm going to hit the action inside the action method called store data on the person. And it's going to be a post function, right? So I'm going to hit the store data right, right here. I'm going to send in the information. Now that's also important. What? How does it know that it should be an ID and a name parameter? Well, under the input field of ID, uh, it's right here. It says ID and the type should be number. Under the other one, it says it should be a text field and the type should be name. That's how it knows what it should send to the backend. Let's try and use it as the final thing here. So I'm, I'm going to press the add button. But before I do that, I wanted to just, just add a small... Um, Show you the network call here. There we go. I'll, I'll add it to 22 and the name of uh, Klaus. And I'll do add. And here it's going to send a network call and it's actually sending to my store data. And let's open here. It says the ID is 22 and it's Klaus. So here you see the form data, name and ID. So you can always check if it's sending the data you expect. I hit the breakpoint. I add the person. And now I just return 
a stupid print. So next time we'll also redirect back to the index page. See you in the next lesson. But now you know how to make forms. So see you in the next lessons.